Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm in LibreOffice, the free and open source, non proprietary suite of office tools. Uh, this is the writer program, which is for writing. It's kind of like a word processor. Uh, what do you call it? A computer? Uh, no, I mean uh, a word processor. Basically, these are your alternatives to things like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. And uh, it actually has some powerful features in here. So recently I was working on a project where I needed to print a document. So I needed to do some formatting and things like that. And what I would normally do is I would write and compose in Emacs and then basically export from org mode to LibreOffice. But in this particular instance, it was actually easier to do the initial composition in LibreOffice as well. And of course, there's a lot of trade-offs. It's not as fast as, as Emacs. Uh, it's not as quick as working with plain text, but it's kind of like a middle ground between something that is totally proprietary and something that is plain text. It's something in the middle. There's still a lot of flexibility. But one of the main features that I like about plain text is you can use Git version control and you can actually see changes that you make over the history of your document. And then I asked myself, well, you know, surely LibreOffice must have something similar. And they do. They actually have a dedicated version control feature built right in, and it's called versions. You'll find it here under file version. And uh, first, just some of the benefits of version control. Uh, basically, for me, uh, many years ago, like when I was in high school or college, I would be writing essays and papers and I would save multiple versions of the file in case I needed to go back and refer to something or also kind of like as a backup if I needed to restore information for whatever reason. But with version control, obviously, you don't have to save multiple versions of one file. You can basically save all the changes and document them as you go and then actually refer back to them if you ever need something or if you need to restore a previous version. So let's actually take a look here at how version control works in LibreOffice Writer. So here you see uh, this is like the first draft of my document. I have a typo here. It's supposed to be first, not frist. So let's say I've done my rough draft here and um, I want to save an initial version. So I'm done with my, my initial pass. I'm going to say rough draft. OK, now I've got a rough draft version. And then I close that window. Now let's say, oh, I noticed I got this typo here. So now I have a, a first draft. Again, you can go to file versions or you could put it in your toolbar here. I have a, a versions uh, key here in my toolbar. I can save new version. And now I can say first draft complete human readable, you know, whatever you want to say. Uh, you can put whatever comments you want here to help you know what's in this draft. And uh, and that's all good. Now, let's say you actually had changed something and you want to see how two drafts are different. I can go up here and click on this rough draft and now do a comparison between what was there and what I have now. And you can see uh, there's my name. I added something. I added the word first and I deleted the word frist. And, uh, and you can actually see here it's showing me the differences in the document. And then I can, you know, accept those changes and you see the comparisons disappear. So uh, that's good if you're collaborating with multiple different writers on the same project and you can actually, you know, leave comments for each other and notes about different changes you make and stuff like that. And those changes can be accepted into the final draft. So there you go. So that is a very basic rundown of the uh, the version control features in LibreOffice there. I like it. It definitely uh, allowed me to take a, a second look at, at LibreOffice. There are some instances and some workflows where um, I would generally prefer to use Emacs, but sometimes if you're working with other people, you're definitely not going to get them to start using Emacs if they've never considered that or, or some other plain text workflow. But something like this it might be an easier sell for them and you can get some people to buy into what you're doing if you want to, to use um, a more non-proprietary program. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below. I'm going to leave the video there. And I will see you all next time.